Hi there, uh, this is Ryan Kurnowski, Director of Community Development for the City of Stevens Point. Uh, this is a follow-up video from uh, the Accessory Dwelling Unit, Accessory Commercial Unit conversation. This video really more focusing on accessory commercial units uh, instead of accessory dwelling units. So uh, if you haven't had a chance to watch the first accessory dwelling unit, uh, an accessory commercial unit video, it's about half an hour long. would recommend grabbing a bowl of popcorn and and just sitting back and, and, and listening to what the city's intention was with the ordinance, uh, talk about why accessory dwelling units and accessory commercial units are becoming more popular, why the city is interested in pursuing uh, the additional development within the city of Stevens Point, um, just a whole host of things. So would recommend that you watch that first uh, to get a better, better understanding of, of the current situation. So what exactly is an accessory commercial unit? Uh, accessory commercial units are a small, detached, or attached commercial unit that's accessory to the principal residential use on the site. More commonly, uh, these are, are small entrepreneurs, uh, uh, solo practitioners, um, folks uh, like uh, maybe an artist having a small artist studio in the backyard, uh, maybe someone who does consulting uh, for businesses or municipalities. Uh, wants to have a small separate space uh, away from their existing home. Uh, web graphic design companies, uh, that's pretty common to work a lot of that from home. Even an attorney's office uh, where you have a limited number of clientele coming in to, to visit. Uh, wedding planning, there, there's a whole host of home and professional office occupations that could occupy that space. Um, provided they meet some really strict uh, uh, guidelines within the city zoning code for home occupation professional office. Uh, so here are two examples of an accessory commercial unit. The one on the, uh, uh, on the top of, of the screen is more like an artist's studio. Uh, the one down here, that's actually an accessory dwelling unit. Both of these are in Minneapolis, but it shows an example of what one of these could look like if there was like a professional office space above uh, an existing garage, um, as opposed to just a standalone structure. So these are two examples of how that how these could look and how they could function. So as I mentioned a little bit ago, uh, the city's accessory commercial unit uh, would have to fall under the purview of home occupation professional office. This is the actual definition uh, within the city's zoning code of home occupation professional office. Um, you know, obviously uh, carrying uh, the occupation out by a member of the immediate family who resides on the premise um, and that it's incidental to the use of the premise for residential purposes uh, and does not affect substantial change in the external arrangement of buildings or in the character of the neighborhood. Um, so really, you know, if you put something in the backyard, it's not going to, from the street side, really make it look like it's substantially different, um, the home occupation. Uh, than, than what uh, folks would expect when driving down a residential street. Uh, that no substantial amount of stock in trade is kept of commodities, commodities sold. Substantial amount is, of course, a subjective uh, term, but uh, you know, if, if you have mountains of boxes that are stored outside, that's definitely an excess of stock, and that would be a violation of the home occupation and professional office uh, definition as, as the city sees it. Uh, kind of interesting is that no more than one person beyond the immediate family may be employed in the said home occupation. Uh, that's a pretty unique uh, aspect of the city's home occupation definition. Um, and then it goes a little bit further into defining it further with uh, using the residents for consultation, emergency treatment, uh, performance of religious professions. Uh, pretty strict rules on what home occupations are not permitted, uh, animal, rodent, aquatic life on the premise. Um, if they're an essential, essential part of the home occupation, not going to be allowed uh, uh, through the city's zoning code. So if you have any interest in reading this further or have any questions about it, uh, this is, does fall within chapter 23 of the city's zoning code. That can be found on the city's website, stevenspoint.com. So just to break it down a little further, I know I talked about this a little bit, but no more than one individual outside the immediate family can be employed and working within the home occupation. So if um, Sally runs a computer repair shop uh, and hires uh, Joe to come in and, and help uh, every once in a while, uh, that would be allowed within the uh, home occupation definition. 
if kind of Sally does not keep a substantial stock storage, um, that would be permissible. But what's really key here is that the home occupation is incidental to the residential use of the property. Uh, and that means that the home occupation is limited in nature and does not serve as the primary use of the property. Um, so the, the, the home should be the primary use. The majority of, of, of the lot should be utilized for residential purposes, but the home occupation, the accessory commercial unit is incidental to, um, to, to, to the residential use of the property and does not substantially change the character of the neighborhood. So uh, I'm gonna to touch a little bit on this. I know we did uh, discuss this pretty in depth in the first video itself, but in, in, for the sake of time, I think what we'll do is just kind of go over this uh, briefly so everybody's on the same page. Uh, if you wanted to construct an accessory commercial unit or ACU, uh, it could not exceed 900 square feet in size. Uh, similar to last video, the 900 square feet size does not account against the city's existing 900 square foot accessory structure limitation. Uh, you can get into that a little bit further as well. Uh, you could construct up to 20 feet in height, could also be a single story building. So uh, if we pop back here, here are two examples. You've got one that's single story in height, uh, maybe a story and a half, uh, considering I don't know what's uh, inside here. Um, but this is a two-story structure uh, down here. If the public uh, were to come to the property um, and interact with the employees, uh, proper access, ingress, egress, and bathroom facilities would have to exist. If it's limited to employees only, there are exceptions. So uh, you'd still have to provide a bathroom if it's just your employees, but maybe it's not. Um, you know, ADA accessible uh, as an example. So as long as there's no public coming in to interact, um, think about someone who might be a web designer. Uh, they might do majority of their work either at their client's office uh, meeting with them, or uh, they might also uh, do a lot of it teleworking, tele-remote um, working and, and, and keeping websites up and running uh, as an example. So if they were to do that from their accessory commercial unit and there's no employees coming in, uh, but maybe they have one employee and one of their immediate family members uh, working for them, uh, they would not need to have specific code requirements for commercial uses. Um, they would just have to provide a bathroom on site. Uh, similar to the accessory dwelling unit as well, uh, this building would have to have separate sewer and water laterals. Um, so just something to keep in mind as, as we work through this as well. Setback requirements uh, for accessory structures are consistent with the accessory dwelling units. Um, again, this is where it gets a little bit convoluted with zoning, uh, but we understand that there's some confusion here. But as long as an accessory building is less than or equal to 15 feet in height and 10 feet away from all structures on the parcel, the building can be three feet from side and rear lot lines. Um, 10 feet if it abuts an alleyway. If a building is zoned R1, so it's our single family residential and greater than 15 feet in height or closer to any building than 10 feet, minimum setback from the side yard and rear yard is 10 feet. If the building is zoned R2, R3, R4, and R5 and is greater than 15 in height or closer to any building than 10 feet, uh, the minimum setback must meet the principal structure for the accessory structures. So in most cases, that's seven and a half to 10 feet for side yard or 15 to 30 feet for rear yard. This would be permitted in all residential zoning districts. So R1, R2, R3, R4, and R5. Uh, anything above that's a business or industrial zoning. Uh, and so uh, those are already permitted uses there. So the, the question that I think I've been fielding the most on the accessory commercial unit is is why why are we looking at doing something like this why are is the city embracing this kind of uh trend that's more uh keen to the to, to what might happen in more urban areas and it's a really good question i i think it's more uh complex than what folks might realize um, but obviously COVID-19 has completely changed how we live and work. 
uh, there are still a number of employees at some of the city's biggest employers that are still working remotely and are uncertain when they'll be returning to the office or if they ever will return to the office. Uh, we're seeing um, some pretty significant uh, outside investment in this community. People who are coming from more metropolitan areas uh, who are able to work remotely for major corporations uh, and they want to look at more rural communities to settle in and work remotely for uh, for several reasons. Uh, Stevens Point has a lot to offer. We have a robust uh, internet and broadband system here. We have great schools. We have a diverse economy. Uh, our downtown is a thriving place to, to live, work, play. Um, and our community as a whole is, is a desirable place for a number of people to live. Um, think about our amenities that towns of our size would love to have. The Green Circle Trail, as an example, uh, a successful business park, um, again, a thriving downtown. Uh, these are all things that uh, this next generation of remote workers and entrepreneurs are looking for, coupled with the cost that living in Stevens Point is pretty inexpensive compared to pure municipalities. Uh, and so, because of the low cost of living, the, the high uh, number of amenities that the city has to offer, it's not surprising to city staff uh, that we're seeing an influx of folks coming from more urban areas uh, or even more rural areas to Stevens Point, um, recognizing this is a great place to, to live and raise a family. Um, also, the, the cost of renting commercial office space is high. Startups do better in low cost to entry spaces. Uh, so if someone has uh, the ability of the financial means to build an accessory commercial unit or accessory uh, dwelling unit, and they want to operate their business out of there, um, it might be cheaper for them in the long run, if they're looking at making a substantial investment, uh, to operate their business uh, out of an accessory commercial unit uh, on their property. Um, I threw this in there because major uh, worldwide corporations like Microsoft, Apple, and Google I have one thing in common. They started in a garage. And so if we're reducing that, uh, that barrier for entrepreneurs to do a startup, um, allowing them to construct an accessory commercial unit or convert um, you know, maybe a detached garage and do a, and do a commercial space so that they can have an office, um, definitely would follow with trends of uh, some of the, the most successful corporations uh, known, known to the world. So uh, the city has uh, Euclidean zoning. I'm not gonna get into the, the theories of, of zoning, but essentially uh, Euclidean zoning uh, makes mixing of low impact commercial and residential uses exceptionally difficult uh, within our current zoning ordinance. So this, this accessory commercial unit helps incrementally bridge that gap, gets us away from the standard, this is where residential is, and this is where commercial is, and this is where industrial is, and really offers the opportunity for a low impact commercial, low impact professional office space to be located uh, and scattered throughout the city of Stevens Point uh, to the point where, where most neighborhoods probably wouldn't even recognize that they exist. Finally, Accessory commercial units help increase our economic diversity, uh, which ultimately makes our community more economically sustainable through uncertain times. Um, embracing entrepreneurs, uh, embracing our legacy companies, all of those things that the city's done over the last uh, several decades is what makes us pretty economically sustainable uh, through uncertain economic times. And so because of that, um, leaning into it a little bit more by offering accessory commercial units as an option for the startup, for the entrepreneur, for the remote worker is going to continue, only continue to make us more economically sustainable. So, you know, I, I don't think it comes as a surprise that economic development staff is very supportive of this amendment as proposed. Um, and, and so we, we hope that you also recognize that there are some important pieces of of this that, that really can benefit our community as a whole. Uh, I'm just gonna give you a quick example. This is the same example that I had 
on the last PowerPoint presentation, uh, but I'm just gonna change it up. This here is a proposed one-story accessory dwelling unit, or we're gonna say for this sake, it's a proposed one-story accessory commercial unit. Um, uh, and we use Sally's computers. Um, maybe we'll use, um, you know, Phil's, uh, Phil's web design group. Um, Phil wants, this is Phil's home here. He has an existing non-conforming accessory garage, uh, but he wants to construct a one-store accessory commercial unit that's 450 square feet uh, for his, himself and his one employee uh, to essentially operate their web design group. And so this is a good example. Um, just get down to the basics of zoning. Uh, the blue dash line here is the 10 foot separation requirement for um, all buildings on the lot. So you can see that here. They would still have to meet that 75% impervious surface uh, maximum or be under that. So anything that's cross hatching gray is impervious surface. You know, sidewalk, driveway, um, the non-conforming accessory garage, the one and a half story home, and the accessory dwelling unit. Uh, they end up uh, about 3,400 square feet total of impervious surface, 5,000 square foot lot divided by 75, I'm sorry, times 75%, it brings you about 3,750 square feet. So they're underneath that that uh, that requirement by about 300 or so square feet. Um, so meeting the minimum setback requirements of three feet because uh, uh, Phil meets the 10 foot building setback from all structures, um, we would issue a permit for this, uh, and 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 Phil would have to construct it. He'd have to run water and sewer lines here, um, provide some type of bathroom. Um, and that, that could work just fine. There would be no issues from the city's perspective on, on how that could function. So this is an example of how it could work. This would be a one story building. Maybe it looks, uh, you know, something a little bit more aesthetically pleasing, like what this building is, uh, or maybe it's, you know, something similar to this, but not two stories. So uh, this is a quick overview, but if you have any questions or comments or concerns, um, please feel free to reach out. Uh, my contact information is, is on the top there. Uh, Adam Kuhn is a city's associate planner and zoning administrator who's been assisting with the uh, accessory dwelling unit, accessory commercial unit uh, code rewrite. Um, so would recommend that you also reach out to him if you've got any questions. Um, we're here to serve you. We're, we're here to, to, to provide information and gather feedback. Uh, the councils ask city staff to work back a little bit, uh, have some neighborhood meetings, get some more information out there, uh, and, and get gather more information. So that, that's why we're making these videos. Uh, that's why we've been having a number of neighborhood meetings. Uh, but these are critical pieces of, of, of city government. And so uh, again, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, issues, objections, please let us know, there's our contact information. Uh, but that's the end of this video. If you uh, have anything else, there's our contact and we'll go from there. Thank you so much for listening and uh, have a great day.